to get out of the guinea pig bridge song there and get back to the real stuff. Okay, I just wanted to start out and, oh, you know what, maybe I don't know what I'm doing here. I was given a little controller. Whoops. Should I need to just start share or what? Obviously, I'm not the AD. There we go. Okay. So before I start out and get talking here, when I signed up to help out here and give a presentation at this fantastic conference, my subject was social media. Since then, my life has changed drastically. Gradually. Now, I have prepared a presentation about social media and the changes that have happened just this year, and I'm happy to do that. But I'm curious, right now, how many people here have uh, heard of or read my book, Mastering Amazon Ads? Okay, there's quite a few here. So, I'm kind of flexible. I'm nothing if not flexible. Would you rather hear a lot about social media, or would you rather hear more about Amazon ads? Amazon ads! <laughs> not, not, not a single social media person. Okay, so... The, the, so you're just going to have to stare at that for, uh, for a while. I may, there, there, there are a couple things towards the end I'd like to uh, mention about social media, but we'll mostly talk about AMS ads. So here, I'm going to be winging it for the next however many minutes I have left. Before we begin, though, what I would like is I have a lovely assistant, Courtney, back there, who is going to go to the end, and she's going to hand a deck of cards in each row, and there's more rows than I have decks, but I do have enough decks to cover everybody that's here. But I just want you to take a card. Doesn't matter which card it is, I just want everybody to have a card. This is going to come into play later today. We believe we've taken out all of the jokers. If you get a joker, then take a different card, but I don't think there's any left. When the cards get to the end, well, the assistant Courtney is going to grab them, take them to the back, and then pass the remaining ones across so everybody will get a card. Because at the end, I'm going to give, give away some stuff, and so this is how I'm going to do it. Anyway, one thing I learned last night, first off, yesterday's presentations were fantastic. I absolutely enjoyed it. Yeah. One thing that I thought was interesting that I learned from yesterday's presentation is specifically on my, my author buddy presentation, is that among you, there are people that I believe, under any circumstance, even if the question applies, won't raise their hand. There's about a few out there that are not hand raisers. So if you're one of those people, could you sh show your hands? <laughs> uh, see, there, there's one. I saw at least six confused looks as they, they weren't sure which way to go. But I am gonna ask a few questions, and one of the things about Amazon ads that you have to understand is to really do it well, it is simple to run an ad. It is very easy to go into AMS. You don't even really need instructions. It's pretty clear to get them going. The hard part is getting Amazon ads to deliver impressions. The hard part is getting clicks at a reasonable bid. The hard part is truly understanding your ROI. Now I warn you, at some point, there may be numbers used. How many of you folks dislike math? Okay, keep your hands up. If, if you, you, you would say you find it challenging. Okay, okay, if you dislike, oh see, now this person dislikes it, but she doesn't find it challenging. That's a necessary evil, okay. So all of you that have it up and find it challenging, how many of you would say it is more challenging than being two days away from dying of leukemia? We've got one person that, given a choice, would go with pending debt. You are excused from all of my math ridicule. Everyone else, I want you to pay attention. And I know that when you were in fifth grade and you were learning your times table and Bobby stuck gum in your hair and you had to cut it out and you were so mad and you said, girls are stupid and they can't not do math. It started, I did that. But I actually wrote a 20 page paper in college. That's not true. W women's and men's brains are different, but the part that does math is identical 
All of you can do math. So when I get numbers, please don't seize up on me. Don't run for the doors. We've actually locked them. So <laughs> there, there, there's, there's no way out here. But Amazon ads is not just about running the ad. Because what you're doing is you're paying for a click. You're driving people to your description page and trying to get them to either buy your book or if they're a KU subscriber, download it. Here's the deal. Yesterday, Brian Cohen's presentation, which was fantastic, talked about descriptions. And descriptions are important. Now, he didn't go into the numbers on descriptions, but the realities are most of your descriptions convert at about 1 in 30. And I know that from massive amounts of data search. And here's the deal. Most of the descriptions of people that I've worked with converted about 1 in 10. So, do you need to be a math, math genius to know that if you're spending 20 cents a click times 30 clicks to get one sale, you're spending $6. Now, if your book is priced at $8.99, you're good to go. How many of you have your books priced at $8.99? Crickets. Okay. But here's the deal. Fixing descriptions is relatively easy. If you use the ideas that Brian talked about, if you study it, it happens instantly. And here was my experience. About 14 months ago, and I gotta tell you, I disliked writing descriptions as much as the woman who would choose leukemia over that. I had put off launching books for two months, where every day, and this, this is not a joke, I mean, I literally, 60 days, every day I woke up and I was thinking, today's the day I'm gonna launch the book because all I have left to do is fill in the description. Everything's uploaded, book's been edited twice, cover art, and that went on for 60 days. I hated it with a white hot passion. But I'm a data guy. And this was my analysis. If we believe that copywriting is a real thing and works, and who here among us hasn't been sucked in by clipping at least once? I mean, so it, it's a real thing. Good copywriting sells stuff. So if that's a fact, and I have bad copywriting, then over the long run, I will sell fewer books. So not deep analysis by any means. But I realized it was time to suck it up. So I sent an email to uh, my buddy Sean Platt, because Sean was, before he was an author, he was a world-class copywriter. And I said, can you recommend a book? And this was before Brian Cohen had his excellent book, Sizzling Synopsis. So he recommended Adweek, and then there's like a, a 300 word like subtitle. Adweek by Sugarman. This book is mostly about print advertising in the 70s, but it still applies today. It's long, and you may think, how does that apply? But he talks about the importance of a hook. And the whole point of a hook is, right out of the gate, you need them to want to read the next line. And here's what's happening when people click on your ad. They see your cover. They might read what you wrote in the ad copy. They may not. It's not assured. And I want you to remember that point later on in this discussion. They get to your description. They click see more. It scrolls down. Their eyes go top to bottom. And they make a decision. Will they go back to line one? If your first line is more than six words, you probably are screwed. Because this is the deal. You need a small hook. You need them to be able to see it in the one-tenth of a second before they scroll down and go on. And if they're scrolling down and they see a paragraph with five or six lines in the description reading business, that's akin to war and peace. You're not going to get them. And I have the data on this. So I read the book. I read in my description on one of my, one of my novels. I have uh, one of a thriller that I pretty much only use for testing. I'm curious. The next day, because I was running ads on it, I was getting clicks every day. I had data. The next day, conversions went from 30 to 1 to 1 in 10. That's a massive increase. And while I'm here to talk about Amazon ads, the point is, if you want to have 
50, 100, 200% return on investment on your ads, you can't do it if your description is rubbish. So, take that away, read Brian's book, think about descriptions, and do that before you start spending money on your clicks. Now, the next thing is that in the world of Amazon ads, I see a lot of questions from people, and I'd like to sort of go through some of the ones that I get most often, because I think I can answer them sort of en masse. How many people have wondered, why did my ad die? That's, oh, see that there you go, already, if I ask for questions, there's probably five people that would have gotten up to the microphone. This is the deal. If you track your daily impressions by ad over time, and you do this for six or eight months, you're going to see patterns. You're going to see that in July, <laughs> sponsored product ads, if you're not grotesquely overbidding, are going to run about 11 days. And then it will shift. Product display interest ads, I remember three distinct times where once it was, they would all run for about seven days. And then they jumped to 21, and then back to 14 and 10. But it was always for periods of time. Now, with the sponsored product keyword ads that I run, my expectation when I run a new ad is that the first day it will get some impressions, it will have four good days, it's dead. So the point is, the reason that your ads die is because that is the normal course of business. A lot of people spend a lot of time blaming themselves, blaming their ad copy, thinking it's something they did wrong. None of you have done anything wrong, with the exception of possibly not tracking your data enough to see that pattern. But I'm guessing, how many of you have seven years data analyst experience in a major insurance company? Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay, so I might be a little more into the data than some of you. But the point is, don't stress about that. Here's another thing. People ask questions about my CTR is horrible. What am I doing wrong? Well, the thing about advertising copy, the words that you write for that little teeny ad is much less important than you think. I've studied it in great depth, over a thousand ads, and without busting out too much statistical verbiage, but the strength of correlation, there isn't any. Every now and again, and this is why you should always try to write good copy. There's value in writing copy. If you know who your target audience is, do your best to write good copy. But when you see bad CTR on one ad versus the other, it's nothing you've done. Here's an example. Out of, I don't know how many, I've had over a thousand ads, but I, I've had one where I wrote ad copy that matter. And the reason is the people most of them won't read the ad copy, they like the cover. The ones that do read the ad copy will then expand it, then start reading your description. If you ask them what the ad copy was between the time that they hit see more and they're considering going back to read that first line, none of them will remember it. They're not impacting your ability to sell during the description. That's a huge thing to remember. But I had one ad. One ad for my satire, Underwood Scotch and Rye, where the ad copy added. Because during that time, that ad had between 700 and 900% ROI for a solid month. I ran versions of it, it just crushed it. It probably, I don't know, five, six million impressions. And these were product display interest impressions, which take about 150 impressions to get a click versus the keyword ads that all of you have been doing because you all believe product display interest ads don't work. Those take a thousand impressions. So when I'm saying five, six million impressions on this one bit of ad copy, it was a big deal. And here's the ad copy. More snark than a snarkopotamus in Snark Town on a snarking spree. <laughs> Those of you that laughed would enjoy under the scotch and rye. And here's the thing, for that month, this is a book that has a 4.4 average. I don't remember the quantity of uh, reviews that I got, but I do know that I only remember there being one that was below five stars. I found 
the exact right people that when they read that ad, they clicked and they were probably already sold. But again, that was a year and a half ago and I tried snarky soup, a, a cup of snark, and you know, it just doesn't work. So don't spend time beating yourself up because your CTR doesn't matter. If you come from Facebook ads, it does matter. It absolutely matters, but not AMS. So if you can remember that, it would be a good thing. Now, because a lot of you have run AMS reports, you have looked, or you've run ads, you've seen your AMS report. Here's the third thing that I want to get across. If you can take this away today and remember it, it's hugely important because even if you're just doing the most basic analysis, if your analysis is wrong, you may kill a good ad. And I can tell you, 90% of the people that have me look at their ads that they've already terminated, because that's what they do. Well, I'll kill the ad, and then I'll ask if I should have killed the ad <laughs> when it's too late to turn the ad back off. That, I, I don't understand. Please don't do that. If, if you want to ask me a question about an ad, don't kill it first and then say, hey, should I kill it? Because it doesn't work as well as you might imagine. 90% of them, their analysis was wrong. Not all the ads they killed were bad, but the reason they killed them was wrong, and probably 60% of the ads were actually really good ads. And here's the reason. ACOS, this is the last column on the report, it's the amount of money you spent on the ad, so if you imagine $10 spent on clicks, and let's say $9.98 spent on clicks, and let's say you had two sales of a $4.99 book, so you made $9.98. Well, you didn't make it, but the sales revenue number says $9.98. Then you've got an ACOS of 100%. The problem is we don't get the whole $4.99. We only get 70%. Here's what most people think, and this is being logical. Well, then all I have to do is watch my ACOS, and as long as it doesn't go over 70%, I'm in the black and I don't need to worry about anything. No, no, no. Because A, the reporting of the sales is slow. It can take five days, 10 days, two weeks before the sale that happened on day one of your ad shows up. So if you're making a decision on day five because you haven't had any sales, you don't know that you haven't had any sales. Point two. AMS ads do not even come close to capturing all the sales. It's, the bottom line is ACOS is not a number you want to use. You want to watch your KDP data because if you've been rolling along on a book, one to two sales a day, you run a couple ads, they get 50, 60 clicks, all of a sudden you're getting five, six, seven sales, something like that. Well, they get 500 clicks and you get five or six, seven sales. But they're not showing up on your AMS ads and you're like, oh wow, that must just be our payment. No. They're real sales, they might show up, they might not, but don't use the ACOS. A little known fact about looking at the ACOS, I, this has been proven by Scientific America. Most people who use that as a metric gain 50 pounds of weight and get gout. So, so, so just don't do it, it's, it's dangerous. The, the point is, if you understand this, so the question then becomes, how do you analyze your data? And, and that's a hard question. I mean, that's, that's why I wrote the book. The book is mostly about analysis, and I tried to put it in terms that people could understand. Because, now here's a serious question. If I ask, how many of you know the formula for return on investment, ROI? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, 100% of you are in the book business. That is unacceptable. I, I, I'm not, you all need to know ROI. You don't like that, you turn your brain off, but you're running a business and you don't know how to calculate your return on investment, I'm gonna teach you right now. Now here's the problem with math formulas. If it's anything but numbers, people don't like letters getting into their math formulas. Here's the problem. In this particular instance, I'm gonna use a couple words. I'm gonna use two words. I'm gonna need you to learn these two words. One is revenue. Is everyone familiar with the term revenue? 
Can we, okay, can we just set, okay, so imagine the big pile of money that is your revenue from whatever marketing you've done. Not just Amazon ads, from doing a book signing, from standing on the street corner with a sign. That's your revenue. And let's say that is $100. Now, the next one is expense. Can you remember that one? Let's say you spent on those books that you sold for $100, $30. Revenue minus expense is what? Can we all agree it's $70 at this point in the equation? Yes. Okay, good. We're halfway there. If you can remember, revenue minus expense, that's step one. Once you get that number, then you can move on to step two. And the great thing about step two, I love step two. Step two is my favorite. The great thing about step two is you don't need to learn a new word. Because all you need to do is punch into your calculator 70 divided by expense. You've already learned that word. We already know it's 30. 70 divided by 30, that's your return on investment. You can, I mean, do, do we have that now? Are we all pretty good on ROI? Because you should, be, you should be calculating ROI on everything you do. When you hire an editor, when you spend money on its cover, that's an expense, and it would be really nice to know how long it takes you to get into the black. Because you may find out that you're getting into the black in four or five weeks, and you've been a little cheap on the covers, and you realize, you know what? I could have gotten the nice cover I wanted because that would mean I'd break even in six weeks. But I have that cover now for 30 years. So there's value in understanding ROI. Now, as far as AMS ads go, again, I told you not to use ACOS. So the problem becomes, what do you look at? And you need to look at the KDP numbers. And here, the math is getting a little more complex in that you sometimes have to use something, and this is less common, I don't expect people to know this term, but a moving average. Okay. I know a few people know what a moving average is because I was lecturing them when I trapped them in corners around the conference. But for those that I didn't trap, does anyone here know what I mean by a 15-day moving average or a three-day moving average? Yeah, see, he's one of the guys I track. Uh, there's a couple of people, very good, but most of you don't. And I wouldn't expect that you would because you don't have you know, seven years of valuable experience. But here's the deal with the moving average. The beautiful thing about it is it smooths out data. So if you've got daily sales that change a lot because you're only getting organic traffic, and let's say you're getting a fair amount, but you want to start doing Amazon ads, the question will become, once you start to ask, how you tell what is the organic that you would be getting without paying a cent versus the new revenue you're generating from the clicks. That's an important concept. And when the numbers are like this, it's hard. But here's the beautiful thing about a moving average. Before I tell you the beautiful thing, I want to explain what it is. And again, I'm going to do it just like you did with the ROI. Can you hit all picture three days of sales? You've got a book, and on day one, it sold three copies. I think we all had a day with three sales on our book. Day two, it sold one. Day three, it sold two. Now, if we were putting that on a piece of paper or in a cell, right below the two is where we would calculate our three-day moving average. We would add up the total, which some of you have been writing and taking notes, and you get extra credit, which will be factored into your final grade. <laughs> so, the point is we've got six sales over that time. We have three days. Six divided by three is two, okay? So that's our moving average for that day. The next day, we have six sales. Now, we drop off the three, so we have a one, a two, and a six for nine sales. We divide that by three because it's a three-day moving average, and we've gone from a three-day moving average of two to a three-day moving average of three. That is hugely helpful. I gotta tell a story right now. So, I wrote the Master Amazon ads book. It's done pretty well. People like it. Of course, the next thing to do is there's always more research.
about three months ago, I turned off all my ads. I didn't do any marketing. I let everything die down to, well, not quite zero, but pretty much nothing. Because I wanted to do more research on the ads, learn more, test ideas. I wanted to test for a long time, but couldn't afford to. And frankly, the sales from you folks buying my book have been enough I can live off the Amazon ads book and let everything die so I can get the research to create a course. Okay, lecture three of the course. And the course just launched, uh, none of the material's been released. I'm doing it like a semester where uh, there's 13 or 14 lectures, there's some bonus material, there's an Excel tool I've created that's kind of really pretty, honestly. I spend a lot of time on the colors, it's, it's beautiful. But lecture three, I did some research using Terry Schott's series, The Game Series, which is fantastic. And here's the deal. I had never researched running Amazon ads on a first book free. And that's a question I get a lot, and I didn't have any data. And I always tell people, you're going to have to test it, but it's going to be differently than paid. I don't know what the conversion rate would be on a description when the book is free, because I have another data. So since I don't have data, I don't know what I should bid. But we wanted to find out, and Terry's a good friend, and he let me run the mock, which was awesome. Because I chose a ridiculous book. And I'm not going to tell you because I don't trust you. I fear that if I tell you this story and the bid, you will do it. And I have to stress, his covers are some of the best covers I've ever seen. His read-through is really good. Before we started, we redid his description, which was an abomination. It was almost a war crime. <laughs> the point is, he sells a ton of books with his war crime description. I changed it to one that Geneva would have no problems with. And we started running the ad, and we were spending a lot per click. But we had a budget of $10 a day, because I wanted to control my numbers. Now, as a data geek, I like data like other people, like shoes or sports or whatever. But I knew that because the nature of how we were going to get our positive ROI was that it wasn't going to come until the people that got the book free started reading through. And I knew what we were spending, and I knew we wouldn't get positive ROI at book two, but he has eight books. So, we started doing it. And for 21 days, I didn't even look at the data. He sent me his data every day religiously. Did an awesome job on that. Thank you, Terry. At 21 days, I brought all the data. I have this massive tool that I use, and I brought it all in and started to analyze. Oh, I was so giddy. I was as happy as those guinea pigs. I mean, I, I got a lot of giddy. It, it, it's like treasure hunting. I know you don't like that, but it is like treasure hunting. I was trying to find out, can I run an ad on a free book profitably if the series is long enough and everything is done right? So what it Four hours later, using all the methods I traditionally use on my own books with paid stuff, I didn't have an answer. I couldn't see any patterns. Because that's all analysis is. It's looking for patterns. How many of you have children? Okay. Picture, your, it's a four in the afternoon, it's a lovely day in the house. All of a sudden, you look up, and it's really quiet. <laughs> Is that a good thing? <laughs> That's a pattern. I don't have kids. I know nothing about them. I've heard you gotta feed them, sometimes like multiple times. <laughs> They don't clean their own cages. I, I mean, it, it, I don't know how they work, but I do know from hearing other parents that quiet is bad. That's a pattern. And we are actually really good at spotting patterns. If you're driving through a snowstorm and you see a sign covered in snow and it's an octagon, you know it's a stop sign. So again, you may think you're not an analyst, but you are. You just have analyzed different things. And so I spent four hours, nothing. I knew there were dancers there, but I had to think a little bit differently. So instead of using the seven day moving average, which is what I was trying, I created a 21 day moving average. I did that for the graphic because I had waited 21 days. I graphed it and boom, instantaneous answer. It was incredible. I then did, because, okay, so I had the data. I knew that on average, prior to us doing this, he was getting 25 
download today without the ads. I knew how his books, I mean, he was getting organic sales, so here's the deal. This test, no KU you pay, so we weren't getting revenue from that. We had to figure out how to take out the stuff you would have got without the ads. The 21 day moving average painted a perfect, clear picture. And when you went to book two, and again, I, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare to talk about Amazon ads, I prepared to talk about the speech I was supposed to give. They're really pretty graphs if you, if you take the course. And you're like, oh, well those are lovely. I like the colors of chose. But anyway, imagine bar graphs and book two was trending down. A trend line is just where you've got a graph and it's mostly going down, mostly going up. It was trending down. And it had trended down to a daily revenue on a 21 day moving average of about $6. The second day after we started the ads, the, it shifted. And it ran out for about to day 19 and then it flattened out. And what that means is we know it takes about 19 days for the people that get into a free book, for most of them that are going to go to book two to make that decision. Because once you get out that far, your data is now flat and you can compare what is the daily revenue, $11, versus the da daily revenue that it would have been, which is the organic, of $6, and you've got five. We were spending 10, but there's more than one book. So the analysis goes on, it looks at book two, then it looks at book three, then it looks at book four. Did I look at the rest of the books? Well, no, because I did this initial analysis and then I did it for over a week. But to really do the analysis all the way out to book eight, I need 60 days. And that's another thing you have to understand about data is sometimes you have to be patient. And if you're doing some sort of test that requires 30 days of watching the data and you're wrong, you've got 30 days of losing money. So that, that's a bad thing. I mean, I just want you to keep that in mind. But anyway, it worked out great, and did not to plug the course too much, but <laughs> lecture three, the video I created, is so awesome. <laughs> it's 15 minutes, but there's a 3.7 second section that I spent 45 minutes on just for a laugh line. That <laughs> I am incredibly proud. I don't know that it's worth 4.95, for the course for that 3.7 seconds, but that 3.7 seconds is worth at least $12 in the course. Just, <laughs> you'll know it when you see it for those of you that are. Anyway, I, I'm not actually watching a clock. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any, I, I can't see. Oh, there's a clock right there. And it's counting down. I've got 14 minutes. Okay, so those are some important things about AMS ads. I, I have talked for another two hours. What I'd like to do is answer some questions because I answered, I tried to answer the ones that I think are most common but I'm sure there are other questions, and this gives us some time. So does anybody have any questions about, there you go. Would you like to go to the mic so people can hear your question? And did everybody get a car? Okay, good, good, good. There we go, we got some more questions. Okay, fire away. How do you, uh, after pages read into the ROI? Okay, I don't know why I didn't answer that question without you asking. That's an awesome question. Okay, how do you factor in page read revenue to your ROI? That's a great question because I know, can I see hands even if you don't like raising your hand? Who is exclusive? Okay, so like maybe half of you folks, okay. Um, page reads is, is real money, and so you would look on a daily basis, and again, if you, you've got an Excel thing or even just on paper, um, and you're looking at your KDP report, and let's say that you know, and you're doing it with a, like a three-day moving average that we use as our example, you can do sort of two analyses. One might be your sales, and then the other one would be doing the same thing, but instead of the number being of number of units sold, it would be number of pages read, and then you can multiply that times the current rate. I think the last number we saw was a .0042, is that pretty close? Um, here's a, a thing I want to point out, this is a pretty common mistake, and I've made it on the calculator myself. When you're putting in .0042, don't leave out one of the zeros, because that makes the number <laughs> 10 times greater, and it's easy to do. 
and, and I, I've had people say, oh yeah, I made $200 by pagers yesterday. And I said, oh, that's great, because then I do the math backwards and say, wow, that's a lot of pages, and I tell them the number. And then they go, oh no, I made $20. <laughs> it happens. But that is an important component. ACOS does not include the page read, so you want to factor that in. So that was a great question. Um, yes, go ahead. Okay, so, so that I'm clear, there's no way to tell about Kindle Unlimited Read when you're doing AMSS until it shows up. Um, you just have to kind of figure that that's the reason. You have to figure it out. Absolutely. There, there, yeah. there, there is not any reporting. Uh, the question was, is there any way to tell KU page reads from the reporting? No. The answer is no. But again, like the example I gave with Terry's book, if you've got the data, and, and that's the great thing about KDP data, if you can all right now go home and run a 90-day report and have 90 days of individual day data, and you can do this analysis on that data. So if you've never run an ad before or you haven't run it in a while, and you start running ads and you're concerned about figuring out the revenue, then take a week or two weeks and do a moving average for the page read, just like we described, and you will see that it's probably a pretty flat line if you've not been doing any other marketing. Of course, if you had a book bug or something, you need to understand that, and you know, maybe do it before or after, or just, just cut those days out. But the point is, page reads are a lagging indicator, and that's a term I know it is. But lagging indicator simply means that if you did a sale today, it's an indicator the ads are working right now. Page read, you could get a KU download, but maybe they only read two pages. What you often see is people who will get, they'll start an ad, they'll get 10 clicks, no sales, and they'll ask the question, why did my ranking jump? They might have gotten one or two KU downloads, and the person may have only just started the book and then had to go feed a child. Oh, and so, the, the point is, you can treat pages like, it's just a larger number, and you should, because it's an important, important thing to kind of Two quick questions. One, yes. uh, I know you can run pre-AMS ads for pre-orders. Do you do that? Exactly. And oh my God, that's a good question. Is it, uh, I tried it once and it was well, didn't, didn't work well. Just my only, my second yeah. question is just about also bots. And do you recommend that people start AMS ads immediately when the book comes out, or wait until the also bots are more established through newsletter swaps or other means? Not only are those two good questions. Well, were you able to hear that question, or should I? Okay, good. Um, Pre-orders. When I launched my book, last three Amazon ads, the great thing about that book is I created my own group, and the rule was, it was a closed group, you could be in the group. How many here are in Matthew? Oh, okay, I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm preaching to the choir. But you could be in the group, but the deal was you had to buy the book. I was gonna let you read it before it came out, but you're gonna have to spend the $9.99. The reason is I wanted to do a, a test, something I've been thinking about for a long time. I've got a quick, I'm going, to, I'm going to speed this up because we're running out of time. Quick question here. If you have two books that came out on the same exact day, one was priced 99 cents and one was priced 499, and for three days in a row they each sold 20 copies, would book two at 499 be ranked much higher than book one? Raise your hand if you think it would be vastly different. Okay? I did that poll in the 20 books to 50K group, and the result was 51 people thought it would be vastly different, 50 people thought it would be the same. In the group, I had a novel that had been sitting on the shelf for six months, completely done, but I hadn't written the description, which is a problem. <laughs> but then I had something I could, I could use it for. So I, I asked the group, I said, is there anybody willing to spend an extra 99 cents? And you know what? You authors are pretty cool. You're willing to spend the extra 99 cents. So I got 169 people, and I said, this is the deal. I'm gonna put these books up for pre-order, which is where I learned the information to answer your question. I'm gonna put them up for pre-order. I did them on the same day. I loaded all the information in so that when I hit the submit button, it was hit it in one, and then boom, bring up the other browser and hit it the other. So they went in within a minute of each other. Interestingly enough, I got the response back from Amazon that they were available for pre-order at the same time. I also put the pre-order out in 90 days because I didn't want 
I want to discourage people that happen to run across the book from buying it because who wants to buy a book that doesn't come out for 90 days? I wanted clean data. So, first day I had 10 or 12 people buy the book. I told them when to buy it, how to buy it, buy beautiful gears first, then go back in, buy Master and Amazon ads. Then the next person, I flip the order. After three days and about 169 pre orders, they were four ranking spots apart. I have data to prove conclusively there is doesn't matter what your price is. I was wrong. I went into that test willing to bet a kidney that $9.99 would crush 99 cents. And then I was going to write a whole book about that and just lecture people that launch at 99 cents. My God, you're a mad woman. Turns out you're not mad. So, but what I learned from about the pre-orders is after I did that, it was amazing how people would find the book, because I also did tests on also thoughts and the seven key words. I used one as a control group, I used six others, and I had people buying the book in very specific and sometimes incredibly convoluted ways. So I would send them an email, and there might be like 500 words of how I want them to buy Mastering Amazon ads. But these people were tolerant, and they did as I was told, and I was able to drive all of my keywords other than the control group, to page one, row one. Or, well, four of the six were page one, row one, two of the six, page one, row two. A month later, they were all still in the same position. I have no idea where they're at today. If you did a search self-publishing, I would guess page one, row four for Mastering Amazon. You can check that out. But the point is, for a solid month, I was in the top spot with four of my six keywords, the other two, the, the seventh keyword improved a little, but it was still starting like page 11 and went up to like page four. The interesting thing is, there were four other keywords that ended up on page one, row one, that weren't in my metadata. And so all that research, but in doing that, it was interesting that uh, periodically, I would get people that would buy a free order, and those come in like within three minutes, and I was watching data like all day long. And th two or three minutes later, after it showed up on my thing, it would disappear. And I suspect those were people that were finding it organically, and then they were realizing that they weren't going to get the book for 90 days. And so I didn't leave it out to 90 days. But then I, next day I did, I tested also bots. And I wanted to see, could I move the also bots across to get on page one? And I absolutely was able to. It, it, was, it, was, it was fascinating data, and I'm down to four minutes and 30 seconds, so I can't go into depth there. But to answer your question, pre-orders, if you do them, I don't think they're hugely valuable. They would be valuable if you can sell enough copies to land on the USA Today list or New York Times. There's value in it there. Other than that, I don't think there's a lot of value. If you did it, you could do a 90 day one to try to like, hit a list. If, if you've got a big list and you can get your tribe to help you out and do pre orders, it's great. Otherwise, there's not a huge amount of advantage. The other thing is, if you do a long pre-order, you are going to get people that will be turned away by that. As far as also bots, the advantage of doing a pre-order, and this is the other side of the coin, is that if you have a tribe, so I'm, I'm telling you these stories about these people in the group that help me out. You all have groups. It's your list. And within your list, a portion of them are rabid fans. And you love your ones. And if you sent them an email and said, I'm going to do this pre-order, for 30 days out, will you help me out? Because I want to do it in a very specific way. I want you to buy the book, but I want you to buy how I tell you to, because it'll help me promote the book. If you have a thousand people on your list, I bet a hundred of them would help you. And you can move mountains with that. And so the point is, if you're gonna do something strategic like that, they're fantastic. Other than that, I don't see that. So that was a long answer, but it was a really good question. So he gets a gold star. Give him a gold star for Penny Cash, wherever he goes. That's not a good. Okay, one person left. I have to my hand. I have a question. Uh, so this is about data rather than tactics. So when you're pulling information off AMS, how yeah. do you how do you do? The, I, I've heard a rumor that you sit there and you like kind of count the minutes and then you clock it and write it down and. Oh, well, please tell me. Okay, I can I can <laughs> tell you about that one, but it's unrelated to your question. Okay, so here's the deal. With AMS ads, it's summary data. You're getting. Whenever you download it, it's all of the impressions and clicks and spend in the history of that ad. 
you need to download it every day and using Excel, compare that to your the last day to get individual days. It's a ton of work, but I, I built a tool for that. It kind of works, people kind of hate it, but it is a horrible, horrible challenge. But it is absolutely worthwhile. I mean, we're talking about there are people that join the group making less than $1,000 a month that are making north of thirty dollars and $40,000 a month because they're spending two hours a day doing the Amazon ad stuff that most of you would hate. You know what? When they hit those $30,000 months, they didn't think it was so bad anymore. Change one perspective. How do you buy that tool? But, uh, well, but the, the tool about the sale is in, in my group. Uh, I, Get through. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because it's, it's worth it. Like, okay. Well, so, okay. The, the deal with the group is that um, and I only got a minute left, and I have to do the card thing. Uh, the deal with the group is it's required that you buy the book. If you buy the book and you, you ask into the group about once a week, I go in and I prove to people there's questions that should you buy the book, so you could lie to me. Um, but if you did buy the book, you say yes, and then I prove to you that you're in the group. So that's that. Now we've got a minute left, and I've got to make the card. So here's the deal. I don't know if you enjoy the speech or not, but I feel like I know some things about Amazon ads. I launched the course right before I got on the road to drive here. It's $495. I'm going to give this a quick shuffle, and I'm going to pick one card. And the people that have that card, and there could be up to nine of you, are in. Seven of hearts. All the seven of hearts. Can you come up or like meet me outside so we don't mess with the next thing? All the seven parts, get the $495 course. Now, I see some of you are bummed because you didn't have the seven hearts, and I've got 20 seconds left. Okay, for the rest of you, if your card is one of these, <laughs> you can get in until sometime tomorrow evening at $295. I dropped the price, so if it's of interest to you, you can get in at $295. Sometime tomorrow, possibly between cocktails, the price is going to go up to 495. It'll be that way forever. I'm not going to close off the course. If you decide you can afford it in six weeks, you can get to it. The lectures, there'll be live lectures, but then the um, they'll be recorded. So, oh, and I'm done. Thank you, everybody. And